Hello, and welcome back to Introduction to Finance. Today we're going to be deriving the annuity due equation for present values. So we're going to start off looking at a regular annuity, then we're going to figure out what would have to change if we switched each one of those cash flows to occur at the beginning of each period. Then lastly, we're going to look at the interpretation of that magnitude and how we can interpret our values for which should be larger or smaller. So the example problem we're going to be looking at here today is we're going to suppose we had $100 per year for three years, and the rate is going to be 5% APR compounded annually. So starting out with the regular annuity, this timeline I have right here, I have three cash flows. Each cash flow occurs at the end of each period. And so if I find the present value of this annuity, the way the present value of an annuity equation works is it takes me one time period before the first cash flow. So the present value of this annuity at t equals zero is going to be equal to the cash flow times one minus one plus i exponents negative n divided by i where each one of our inputs here, our cash flow would be $100. Our i, these cash flows are all annual and our rate is annual, so we don't have to worry about compounding or anything like that, or intra-year compounding. So my i is gonna be that 0 0.05 or 5%. And then my n is gonna be my number of cash flows, so in this case, three. So if I plug everything in, I'm gonna end up with 100 times one minus, 1 plus 0 0.05 to the negative third power divided by 0 0.05, which gives me an answer of $272.32. So we'll come back and look at the interpretation of that answer in a second. Now if I switch my cash flows to be what's called an annuity due instead, each one of my cash flows occurs at the beginning of the period. I still have three cash flows though, right? So the exact same number of cash flows, just the timing is different. So let's suppose I group these three cash flows together and solve for the present value of this annuity. So the trick is that that is gonna take me one time period before my first cash flow. So it's really taking me back one period too far. So if I were to write out my equation again, I'd have the present value of the annuity at t equals negative one equals the exact same equation I had up above. I still have three cash flows. My rate is 5% and my cash flow is $100. So at t equals negative one, it would be $272.32, but I really wanna know the value at t equals zero, right? I want the present value. So now what I can do is I can think about this as just one little timeline between two time periods. And I'm taking that 272.32 and bringing it forward one time period. So now it's a single cash flow And I'm bringing it forward, so I need to compound it one time. The way I'm going to do this is now I'm going to say future value equals present value times 1 plus i to the n. So in this case, I'm going to take $272.32, compound it at 5% one time. That gives me $285.94. So this trick that we just did, where we brought it back one time period too far, too far, and then we brought it forward again, is the exact same trick you're gonna do every time it's an annuity due. So I could actually generalize this equation, and I could say that the present value of an annuity due is equal to the present value of a regular annuity compounded one additional time.
Now let's think about the interpretation between the two. So suppose there are both investment opportunities where you would receive the cash flows. Which one would you be willing to pay more for and why? So let's look at both our timelines at the same time. So the key here is you want to think about when you're receiving the cash flows and what you can do with them. So in the first timeline, I wouldn't receive my first cash flow until the first year. Right, so I lose out on the opportunity to invest that money for that whole first year. Then once I receive my $100, then I can start investing it. Whereas down here at the annuity due, I get my first cash flow immediately, so that first $100 I can immediately reinvest into something else. So money now is worth more than money later. So I would pay more for the annuity due because I received my cash flows sooner. And in that case, I can reinvest them sooner. Now I could also look at the opposite version of the question. So suppose instead you would withdraw the cash flows. In which situation would you need more in the bank to start? So you could think about this as a set of bills that you had to pay. Would you need to have more money in the bank if you had to pay your first $100 one year from now, or if you had to pay your first $100 today? So the interpretation for this one is that you'd need more money in the bank if you had to pay your first $100 today, because you never have the opportunity to earn interest on that money. It immediately gets taken out of your bank account, then only what's left over gets reinvested Right for the first year, then you take out another hundred, then the next year, take out another hundred. Whereas up here on the first timeline, you wouldn't need to have as much invested today because all of your money is able to earn interest for that whole first year. Then you make your first withdrawal. So again, if I were to answer this one, you need more in the bank for the annuity due because you withdraw the first cash flow immediately. So that cash flow never earns interest. So that is the interpretation of an annuity versus an annuity due when solving for present value. I also have a separate video for future value, which I'll link here at the end of this video.